be all you have to do. My question this morning is this. Are you doing all that God wants you to do? You have a calling in life. When you give your life to Christ, there's something you want. For Moses, you know what that was? Take the people out of Egypt and lead them to the promised land. That's what God wanted. Now that's a heck of a task. And you know what? God gave you all the tools you need. He, he, he gave them that staff. He gave them the ability to inflict plagues on the Egyptians. You might say that God had all worked out. All Moses had to do was say yes. All of you in this church are in ministry. Two churches ago, they used to say the pastors were, and that was my name, and the ministers were the congregation. And you do need to be a minister. Now, this church has done some great things. I picked up on that in the short time I've been here. Hard to believe it. This is the last Sunday in August. But what is your call? You don't have to necessarily appear before a very bush. But I believe every one of you in this room has a talent. Don't think you don't have a talent. We did a study one time on spiritual gifts. I've yet to find a person that doesn't have a spiritual gift. Everybody has that gift. So, do like Moses. Point three is choose heavenly rewards over earthly riches. That's a tough one. Because he regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as a greater value than the treasures of Egypt. Because he was looking ahead to his reward. Are you thinking earthly, now, present tense? Are you thinking beyond? This life on earth goes real fast. You know, I never thought I would get old. I really, I mean, I used to look in the mirror every day and see a change. And my dad would say, one day it will happen to you. And you know, things do change. As my kids even said, I went back to visit my parents. My dad would work in the basement doing his upholstery stuff. And everything was constant. We travel a lot, move a lot. But when I went back to that house, Everything was the same. And then one day we visited my mom and dad. Oh, and they sound silly. And then all of a sudden the years went in, in this super dry. The next thing you know, the older kids were growing up. The late wife baby was growing up. And then we made that trek to college and dropped them off. I remember taking Matt to college and then my wife took the mic a little further out. And David was with her, and I went home in Debbie's house. And then one day, David told me he wanted to move out. He was my last thing. 30 years I had a kid in my house. And how quick it went. Time goes by fast. What does the Lord want you to do? You know my story. I had it all figured out. I was going to retire, do this, that. It was all planned out. Not one thing has fallen into place. <laughs> and you know why? Because it's not what God wanted me to do. Choose heavenly rewards over earthly riches. Make sure it's God's plan. And lastly, choose God pleasing over people pleasing. Think about that, right? By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Now that verse says something to me, and it's simply this. Once you get focused on God, it changes your life. It really does. Priorities change. Everything changes. What is your focus? Right now, I'm asking the question, are you satisfied with the relationship you have with Jesus Christ? Are you? I'm not. I think there's things I need to do differently. And right now, rather than my life being simply mapped out, I'm more confused now than ever. That may sound odd for me to say. I don't know what God wants me to do now. I really don't. I mean, I just wanted to retire, do my last sermon, and, you know, enjoy life and, and do things and, and have those fun things retired people are supposed to be doing. But it wasn't meant to be. But I stand here this morning saying, okay, Lord, this is what you want me to do. Not your will, but my will. For 30 plus years, I was telling people to do that. But I didn't really want to do it. I wanted to do it for 30 years. And then I said, that's enough. But who knows where ministry will lead you? You never know. In 1980, in 1980 I left the Lake of Kansas. I had a good job in the post office. 
and I gave up that job, put all my stuff in you all, and moved to Dayton, Ohio, and go to seminary. Why did I do that? Everybody thought I was crazy. But we went because my wife and I both knew that that was God's calling for our life. When you say yes to ministry, not just preachers, any ministry, when God tells you this is your ministry, and you say yes to it, you better get ready. 